Hello and welcome to our dining guide for MSC Virtuosa. In this video we're going to cover all the restaurants and eateries aboard this incredible cruise ship and we'll tell you which ones you should try and which ones you should avoid. So if you're feeling hungry, let's make a start. MSC Virtuosa has a variety of casual, all-inclusive eateries on board and no place is more popular than the Marketplace Buffet. This venue is open for breakfast, lunch, dinner and late night snacks, which are available until the early hours. The variety of food on offer here is extensive ranging from the very best Italian cuisine as you would expect from an Italian cruise line like MSE to international dishes from America to China. The Marketplace Buffet is totally free and you can help yourself to as much as you like, whenever you like. The quality and standard of the cuisine was also pretty good. While the food didn't quite match the Windjammer with Royal Caribbean and the buffet restaurants aboard ships with premium cruise lines such as Holland America, Celebrity, Princess and Cunard, it was definitely on par with P&O, Ambassador and was a lot better than Morella. When it comes to main dining aboard MSC Virtuosa, it feels like there are dining rooms everywhere. If you're staying in Bello or Fantastico accommodation, you can dine at Blue Danube, Minuetto, Symphony and Opera. On board Virtuosa, you are offered early and late dining options. Early dining ranges between 5.30 and 7.30pm and late dining is between 7.45 and 9.45pm. Whatever option you request when booking your cruise, you will be assigned a certain time between the appropriate time range for the sitting you have requested. We sailed in the Yacht Club for this cruise, but we did wander down to the Minuetto dining room for lunch one day for the benefit of this video, and we're sorry to say the food was pretty awful. Soups were very bland, prawns had not been deveined, and the food was really quite cold. Service was also below standard, and this was highlighted not just by how slow it was, but by the waiters not inquiring whether everything was okay with our meal when we had barely touched a thing. If you're staying in Oreo accommodation, you will dine in the Il Campo dining room, located on deck seven. The menu here will be the same as the menus offered in other dining rooms, but you can expect service and standards of food to be slightly elevated. The Yacht Club restaurant is the main dining room for those in the Yacht Club accommodation, and is the most prestigious dining venue on board. While we were disappointed that the menu of food served here is no different to the other dining rooms on board, the quality and standard of the cuisine was most certainly better here compared to what we ate in the other dining rooms. It was clear that a lot more thought had gone into these dishes, especially in terms of presentation, and the service was always second to none. We were disappointed to see that there was very little in the way of option for vegetarians, whereby you only had one option as a starter and entree. If you were a vegan, there was no option at all, which we find quite unbelievable. MSC do not offer alternative menus for those with dietary issues in the same way other cruise lines do. However, the maitre d' did go above and beyond each evening to provide Jay with a suitable dish which did feel very personal and the food we ate here was very good. An observation we would make is that the food served here is quite a way off from the food served in Grills restaurants aboard Cunard ships, both in terms of food quality and other options for those with dietary issues. When you're paying a huge premium to stay in a yacht club, we do think that it's only right that you get a more refined and premium menu compared to other dining rooms on board. However, this is just an observation. The food was delicious here and the service was forever impeccable. Variety and choice, however, was somewhat lacking. If you're a chocoholic, you can fulfill your cravings at Jean Philippe Chocolate and Cafe. This extra charge venue serves incredible hot drinks such as their Belgium hot chocolate, and you can choose to have one of their many flavours of macaroons to accompany it. You can also purchase a wide range of different Jean Philippe chocolates to eat on board or take back to loved ones at home. Virtually opposite, you also have Jean Philippe crepes and gelato, serving freshly made crepes with a huge choice of toppings and their classic Italian gelato. This venue is an additional charge and is therefore not included as part of your cruise fare. If you love Mexican food, you must try Ola Tacos and Cantina, which is open for both lunch and dinner. This is a specialty restaurant where you can pay for each dish you order, or you can eat as much as you like for £16.99. When you consider that a burrito is charged at £11.99, if you intend to have a starter and a side, you may as well pay to eat as much as you like. The atmosphere in this dining venue is great, and the service was always really friendly. Food quality and presentation was also really quite good, and we both felt that we got what we paid for. Watch out though, the iced margaritas are lethal. Staying on deck 6, you'll also find Indochine, which is a contemporary Vietnamese French inspired specialty restaurant. This is one of the best Asian restaurants we've eaten on a cruise ship, and it really did feel premium in both terms of surroundings and the quality of cuisine you were served, but you certainly pay for it. You can order from the main menu where starters are between 13 to 27 pounds and main courses are priced between 24 and 49 pounds. However, most people will opt for the dining experience as part of a package where you have a more limited menu 
but you'll pay £54 for a four course meal with sides. Indusheen is open for both lunch and dinner and is definitely one of the best dining venues aboard MSC Virtuosa in our opinion. On deck 7 you'll discover Kaito Sushi and Teppanyaki. Kaito Sushi is located outside the veranda overlooking the stunning Galleria Virtuosa and you can order and pay for dishes individually which range between £4 to £32 depending on what you go for or you can choose to opt for the more limited menu which is £31 per person and is included as part of the dining packages. With this option you can choose dishes including the miso soup, salmon and avocado rolls and the green tea ice cream to finish. Kaito Teppanyaki is a bit more pricey but you are paying for the experience to watch the talented chefs cook and prepare your food in front of you. You'll pay for a set menu which includes a vegetarian set menu for around £25 per person all the way up to the more expensive option which is charged at £59 per person and includes ingredients such as lobster. Kaito also offers a children's menu charged at around £12. Next door to Kaito is Butcher's Cut, and as steakhouses go on cruise ships, it is very good indeed. You can choose to pay for dishes individually, where prices range between £12 for the goat's cheese tart with blueberry compote, and oysters charged at £20. Most people will choose to opt for the dining experience, which is charged at £43 per person, which includes three courses. As good as this venue was, it was quite expensive for what you get when you consider the Crown's Grill and Princess Ships is charged at just $29 per person, but we would still say give it a go if you enjoy a good piece of steak and seafood. You can also try fresh seafood at the Champagne Bar, which includes caviar charged at £46 for 30 grams or scallops where prices go up to £32 for a dozen. The seafood complements their impressive bar menu of different champagnes and wines from around the world. Fancy an ice cream? There is no better place than the Atmosphere Ice Cream Bar, located poolside on deck 15. You can choose between soft scoop ice cream or ice cream from a machine for a small charge. However, children get soft ice cream from the machine as part of the kids' drinks package. On the opposite side of the pool deck, you have the Atmosphere Bar South, which is the poolside grill, serving burgers, hot dogs and fries throughout the day, which is completely free of charge. And lastly, in the MSC Virtuosa Dining Guide, you have the incredible MSC Yacht Club High Tea served in the top sail lounge of the Yacht Club each day. This is one of the very best inclusive afternoon teas we've experienced on a cruise ship. You can expect delicate finger sandwiches, delicious sweet treats and scones served with fresh clotted cream and strawberry jam. And this fine dining experience is matched with the impeccable service and the pianist who will gently play here throughout your high tea sitting. If you rate the afternoon tea aboard Cunard ships, we strongly recommend you give this a go and seeing how it compares. Fine dining and good food is one of the most important things on any cruise, and this is something MSC Virtuosa largely excels at. Main dining for those in Bella and Fantastica was pretty poor from our experience, but we only ate here once and we could have had bad luck that one lunchtime. However, if poor main dining is a common theme on this ship, then it is certainly compensated by the fantastic food everywhere else on board. It's just unfortunate that much of the time it will come at an extra cost. But regular cruisers with MSC will know this. MSE is a great cruise line if you're prepared to pay out for all the extras, but if not, the dining experience will probably seem quite basic compared to what other cruise lines offer. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more cruise ship dining guides, ship tours and reviews, please click that button and subscribe to our channel. We've got many cruises lined up and we'd love to take you with us.